This right here is absolutely hilarious. Kai is saying <laughs> the internet is broken or I was banned from Twitter is easily the highlight of my day. I just got around to watching the episode this Monday and I know you guys might not see this video until probably Tuesday, but I apologize for the delay, but oh my god, like this... Like, it, it's so funny, it's so, it's so relatable, because it, stuff like this actually happens. Like, Kaguya literally acts like someone that has not really interacted at all on the internet. Like, has no idea what technology is, or how to operate different websites, Twitter, etc. It's just so funny to see scenes like that in this episode, because stuff like this happens. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, I recently had an issue very similar to Kaguya yesterday, actually. I had an issue to where I did not really know how to operate my phone. I actually got a new phone recently. I got, a finally I upgraded from a flip phone to an actual smartphone, no longer living in the dinosaur era. And so, yeah, because of that, I don't really know how to work phones. Like, I've never really owned a phone. And I was kind of like Kaguya for this episode when she was like, Hiya, Saka! You know, the internet broke because I, I, I just didn't know how to navigate. I don't know how to navigate from, let's say, like a phone call, text message to, like, different stuff. It's just like, I never messed with stuff like that. I've never done that on a phone. So, it's funny. I, I, I thought that this little scene was very relatable to something that actually happened to me literally recently. But just seeing Kage act like that, it's just it's super adorable because it fits so in line with her character because she is someone that is a book smart girl. She's someone that learns from witnessing it or someone that, you know, reads through books and stuff. But when it comes to online knowledge, she doesn't really look anything like that up. So it makes so much sense why, you know, she would struggle so much to be able to even learn how to make a Twitter account. But okay, let's, uh, let, let's talk about Hayasaka for a second. Hayasaka! I'm starting to see my many like her as a character. Well, I've seen so many in the comments section tell me she's pretty much best girl. Even though I still think Kaguya is best girl, Hayasaka is a pretty good character. Like, a really good support character, because that entire bath scene was hashtag relatable as well. Like, when you're trying to do something important and someone keeps interrupting you because they need help. That's pretty much what that scene was. Like, just not even counting the bath scene. Like, have you ever been in a situation in real life to where you're doing something, like you're either relaxing, you're playing a game, you're eating something, whatever, and someone keeps coming up and it's like, hey, 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 hey. Like, they, they keep asking for your help over and over and over and over again, which, don't get me wrong, it's kind of flattering that they would need your help, but at the same time, when you're trying to relax, you finally have that free time, you're like, ah, and you're relaxing and all that, and when they just keep coming at you and asking questions or whatever, you're like, can you please just let me relax? Like, I just please let me do my thing or whatever. Can you wait a moment? And seeing Kaguya constantly asking, it makes sense why she would, because she had no idea. She was being innocent. Like, from Kaguya's POV, she was being innocent. She was. And she wasn't trying to be annoying. She wasn't trying to be mean to Hayasaka. She wasn't trying to do that. She was just seriously asking a question because she doesn't know. But she was doing that to Hayasaka when she was trying to relax. And just seeing how she was getting annoyed slowly, I'm just like, I feel for her. That's relatable as well. And I think many of us can agree that's something that's probably happened in our life when we're doing something. Someone keeps bugging us back and forth while we're trying to do something. But it doesn't just stop there. Also, Hayasaka... Throwing that lawn chair into the bath. That seems like... It's hilarious to see her go that far to lay and relax in a bath. But if I had a bathtub that large, I would probably do the exact same thing. But it also reminds me of my childhood. There's a lot of relatable moments in this episode now that I think about it for me. But that reminds me of my childhood. When I used to have this public pool where I lived back in Florida, there was this big pool with a lot of lawn chairs. And I... Uh, it's probably something everybody's done, or maybe not, maybe I'm just a random person that does it, but I remember throwing, like, 20 lawn chairs into the public pool, and it, it was a day nobody was there, and I was by myself, but I threw 20 lawn chairs into the public pool, where I could, like, sit down or make, like, a fort in the water, it was, oh my god, what I did as a kid, but, yeah, seeing Ayasaka do that, I'm like, yeah, that's what I kind of did. I mean, not to the extent of relaxing, more just making a fort, and it just reminded me of my childhood memories. I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Kaguya-sama, for reminding me of certain things I've forgotten about for such a long time. 
But okay, let's get on topic, though. So, Hayasaka, she is a really good support character. She obviously is someone that I think, in a lot of ways, she isn't appreciated as much as she should. I think Kaguya, even though we know she's not trying to be malicious, she's not a bad person, I think she doesn't realize how much she depends on Hayasaka. I, I, I think she's not really aware of that. And Hayasaka understands that Kaguya is someone that doesn't recognize these things, but at the same time, I feel bad for her because she's obviously not appreciated as much as she should be. She does help out Kaguya quite a bit, and seeing what she did for her in this episode is something that could annoy a lot of people, but because of how kind she is, she wanted to help out Kaguya for she could be able to function and maybe even get to talk with Miyuki. Now, when it comes to the scene with Kaguya's backstory or her parents, now that was a sad scene, which I... Didn't expect. That's, um, it definitely explains a lot about Kaguya as a character and why she acts like she does in public and why there was such, like, a, a brutal encounter between Miyuki and her when they first met. So let's get into that. From my understanding from that scene, that brief little scene at the end of the episode with Kaguya's parents or her father... She has not really ever gotten to feel what parental love is. Like, she's never really gotten that feeling of what it means to be loved by a parent. She never got that upbringing, that proper upbringing. She may have had a lot of wealth. She may have been able to probably get anything she wanted, maybe. But she was, at some point, she just didn't understand what it meant to really have a family. She didn't understand that family bond, to be able to just sit down and relax and have fun with a family member. She never got that. And so, it's obvious now why she acts like she does. Why she's so naive. Or she doesn't know how to interact with certain people. Or why she was so vicious probably to Miyuki when they first met. Was because she's never had any encounters like that. She's never gotten to really sit down and chat with people. And talk with them on the same level. Because she was always excluded from that. She never really got to see stuff like that. Just because of how her parents were. She wasn't raised properly. And so, so in stuff like that. In cases like this. This can really ruin a child. It, it happens in real life to where the life of a child, early stages are very important, especially for a parent. Like, you need to definitely raise them right and give them the proper nurturing for their age. You, you need to. And seeing how her parents basically neglected her, it made it to where she acts a little bit cold to people. So I'm starting to understand why Kaguya is how she is. It's thanks to her parents. Her parents aren't obviously good people at all, which says a lot. Like, there's a very big difference between Kaguya's parents and Miyuki's parents. I mean, even though, you know, Miyuki's parents are probably not the best parents, I feel like they're a lot better. At the very least, they're willing to, you know, talk with, you know, me, you know, Miyuki and actually interact with him, you know, show parental love and all that. I feel like that is actually a thing that happens. Well, in Kaguya's case, that doesn't happen at all, and she's just like, she's fine with it. She doesn't even realize what she's lacking, what she's missing, because she's never had it to begin with. That's the sad part about the whole event. Within this episode, we have a little ramen segment of Fujiwara, Chika. Chica, <laughs> uh, that entire segment, I didn't know what to think of it. I, when it first started, I was like, huh? Like, I was like, is, what's going on here? I, I was just, like, confuddled. And then the scene progressed, and you see how this man was basically saying, is she a really connoisseur of ramen? Like, is she someone that understands what's good and what's not for ramen? And this man's just judging her. The ramen shop owner is judging her. They're both viewing her and wondering, is she truly someone that's worthy to taste ramen and understand the pinnacle of it? And as the scene progresses, it progressively gets funnier and funnier because at first they think that she's a fool. She's naive. But then they find out that she's actually someone that's worthy to eat ramen. She's really talented. And just seeing how they start praising her, they give her a thumbs up. Even the ramen shop owner <laughs> gives her a thumbs up. I'm like, what? Like, honestly, this probably probably people like that out there because you know there has to be people that eat food a certain way and there's just a certain way to really enjoy a certain dish and they expect it like that and if you don't obviously you're naive and you're not really appreciating what really goes into it the craft of making that dish and so I feel like this episode could also be relatable like that little segment could be relatable for some individuals just because of what happened within it so what else really happened in this episode I guess uh Miyuki and Kaguya actually not getting to meet up. Now, that was sad. That was a really sad moment to this episode. I thought we were going to have, like, a, some form of a happy ending, but this really wasn't a happy episode, actually. I mean, it was funny, 
But it was actually more along the lines of sad than anything else. Because, I mean, it's not just the fact that Kaya didn't really know how to work the internet because of how she is, and also her parents' situation, but Miyuki and Kaguya, because of how they are as individuals and they can't really communicate properly with each other, it made it to where they ended up being lonely and not being able to talk at all throughout these first few weeks, these first three weeks of summer break. And they probably won't be able to really talk with each other until they finally go on their little trip together at the end of summer break. It's sad because, you know, once again, you see how lonely they are. They want to communicate, but they just can't because they don't want to be the first person to really confess. Like, we know from uh, Miyuki's standpoint, if he was to do something, he feels like Kaguya would say, how cute. And Kaguya, we had a reversal this episode. She was thinking of Miyuki saying how cute as well, which was like, Whoa, like, that was a really different way to go about it, but I feel bad because they weren't able to actually talk with each other, which ends the episode on a sad note. I'm kind of sad about that. I do hope that next episode allows them to smile, be together, and get closer as individuals and as a couple as well. But I think that's about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below because for some reason, even if you click the subscribe button, you don't always get notified. So if you want to get notified, hit that bell icon. And with that, Chibi out.